Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry lab video covers an alkane conformations experiment. This is part one, the pre-lab. In this experiment, we're going to learn about conformational analysis and computational chemistry. Molecules can adopt different rotational forms that are called conformations due to rotations about single bonds. In this experiment, we're going to use computer software to model these conformations and look at several alkanes. We're going to use the computer program CASH, which is a commercial software package, to calculate the energies of the conformations of several molecules and view their structures. Using computers to study molecular structure and behavior is a field of chemistry known as computational chemistry. The program CASH works by using classical physics to model atoms, bonds, and molecules. This modeling strategy is called molecular mechanics. It's one of several different strategies that can be used to model the behavior of molecules using computers. Atoms are modeled as spheres, and bonds are modeled as springs. This actually works really well for describing energies of conformations in organic molecules. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Here are some learning objectives for this experiment. We will learn to identify sources of steric and torsional strain in molecules. You will be able to predict the relative stabilities of linear alkane conformations based on these strain arguments. You'll be able to predict the relative stabilities of chair cyclohexane conformations based on strain. You'll use computer software to calculate energy differences between conformations. You'll use energy differences between these conformations to calculate their equilibrium ratios. And you'll get practice drawing Newman projections and chair cyclohexanes. Organic molecules aren't static objects, they move. Conformations are different poses that a molecule can adopt from different bond rotations. As an example, here's a 3D perspective drawing of ethane. This particular conformation is called staggered. If we rotate about the central carbon-carbon bond, we can put it into a different conformation that's shown here. This is called the eclipsed conformation. The eclipsed conformation can rotate back into the staggered conformation, and there's an equilibrium that gets established between these conformations in ethane. Conformations have different stabilities or energies due to differing amounts of strain. When the electrons and bonds or atoms are brought too close together, they begin to repel each other, and this creates additional chemical potential energy that's called strain. In the staggered conformation, the bonds and hydrogen atoms are as far apart from each other as possible. Therefore, the staggered conformation has less strain and is more stable. Every rotation about the carbon-carbon bond brings them closer together. Rotating into the eclipse conformation brings them as close together as possible. The in-plane hydrogens are close together, the hydrogens that are on dash bonds are close together, and the hydrogens that are on wedged bonds are close together. This means the eclipse conformation has more strain and is less stable. We could also say it's higher in energy. Since the staggered conformation is more stable than the eclipse conformation, staggered will be preferred over eclipsed. You could think of this as just being a much more comfortable position for ethane to exist in. Ethane will spend much more time in the staggered conformation than in an eclipsed conformation. The equilibrium will favor staggered. I've changed the magnitude of the equilibrium arrows to reflect that the left structure, the staggered structure, is much more abundant. In this experiment, we'll be expanding on this idea and looking at the conformations of more complicated alkanes, and we'll be using a computer program to tell us how much more stable one conformation is than another. Here I'm showing a video of rotation about the central carbon-carbon bond. As it rotates, the molecule cycles between staggered and eclipsed conformations, moving through lower and higher energy levels as it rotates. From this perspective, it isn't particularly easy to see the relationships between the front hydrogens and the back hydrogens. If we rotate the molecule and look down the central carbon-carbon bond, we can see these relationships much more easily. Now when the molecule rotates about its central carbon-carbon bond, we can see it cycling between staggered and eclipsed conformations more easily. Here's a staggered conformation and an eclipsed conformation. Staggered, eclipsed, and back to staggered. We'll learn to draw molecules in this perspective using something called a Newman projection representation. On this slide, we're going to talk about Newman projections of molecules. Newman projections are a different way of drawing molecules that make it easy to see the differences in energies due to strain relationships. We'll start by drawing a Newman projection of the left structure, the staggered structure. The first thing you need to do is set your perspective. I'm putting a picture of an eyeball here and imagining the perspective is looking down the carbon-carbon single bond. From this perspective, the carbon to the left is closer to our eye. I'm going to highlight that one in red. To draw a Newman projection, we'll draw the front carbon as a dot. Then, from this perspective, there's a hydrogen that points straight down on that front carbon. I'm going to draw its bond and the hydrogen like this. From our perspective, the dashed hydrogen on the front carbon would be pointing towards the upper part of the screen and to the left, while the wedged hydrogen on the front carbon would be pointing towards the upper part of the screen and to the right. 
The back carbon gets represented by a circle. Bonds to the back carbon are represented as lines that emanate from that circle. On the back carbon, there's a hydrogen that points up towards the top of the screen. I'll draw that one in. Notice how I started the line at the circle, not at the dot. From our perspective, the dashed hydrogen on the back carbon points to the lower part of the screen and to the left. The wedged hydrogen points to the lower part of the screen and to the right. This is the Newman projection of the staggered conformation. From this perspective, you can see that the hydrogens and their bonds are as far apart as possible. If we select four atoms in a row, we can define something called a dihedral angle. Here, I'll select the hydrogens that are in plane along with the carbons. I'll highlight those atoms and bonds in pink. In the Newman projection, I'll mark the hydrogens I've selected here with pink circles. The angle between these hydrogens is the dihedral angle. I've indicated it here with a double-headed blue arrow. Dihedral angle is often indicated with the Greek letter theta, and in this case it's 180 degrees. These hydrogen atoms are as far apart from each other as possible. Now let's draw a Newman projection for the eclipse conformation. We'll again set our perspective by imagining our eye focused on this carbon. That carbon I'll highlight in red for purposes of demonstration. That carbon gets represented as a dot. From our perspective, there's a hydrogen on that front carbon that points to the lower part of the screen. I'll draw that one in now. The dashed hydrogen on the front carbon points to the upper part of the screen and to the left, while the wedged hydrogen points to the upper part of the screen and to the right. The back carbon is represented as a circle, and bonds to it are drawn as emanating from that circle. From this perspective, the front hydrogens are eclipsing the back hydrogens. If we were to look straight down the carbon-carbon bond, the front hydrogens would completely obscure the back hydrogens. To make things clear, we're going to imagine shifting our perspective a little bit so that we can see the back hydrogens behind the front hydrogens. For example, the hydrogen on the back carbon that points down will be drawn offset a little bit on the Newman projection like this. When I draw the other two hydrogens on the back carbon, I'll draw them as offset as well. The wedged hydrogen on the back carbon points up and to the right, while the dashed hydrogen on the back carbon points up and to the left. This eclipse conformation is high in energy because these hydrogens are eclipsing and they're close together. If we imagine this dihedral angle between the in-plane hydrogens, that dihedral angle for these overlapping hydrogens is zero degrees. These hydrogen atoms are as close together as possible with maximum strain. The dihedral angle is a useful measure of how close atoms are to each other in different conformations. Now we're going to look at the conformations of cyclohexane. Cyclohexane is not a flat molecule. The carbons are sp3 hybridized and they're tetrahedral. It has many possible conformations, but chair conformations are the most stable. Here's a view of chair cyclohexane from the top. It actually does look like just a hexagon when you look at it from the top side. But when you rotate it and view it from the side, you can start to see chair cyclohexane's unique shape. I'm including a video here of the carbon skeleton of cyclohexane shown from the top and then rotated into the side view where you can see the chair. Here's one of the chair conformations and here's the other. Every cyclohexane has two chair conformations and they interconvert through a process called ring flipping. Cyclohexane has two types of positions called axial and equatorial. The axial positions point straight up or straight down. On the left chair cyclohexane, here are the axial hydrogens, and here they are on the right cyclohexane. Equatorial positions point up or down too, but they also lean outward, which gives them more room. Here are the equatorial hydrogens added in on the left cyclohexane, and here they are added in on the right. Axial and equatorial positions interconvert in a process called ring flipping. I'll mark the axial positions on the left chair cyclohexane with these pink circles. When this molecule ring flips, those axial groups end up in equatorial positions. This will be important when we start looking at substituted cyclohexanes because the substituents location will change positions, axial or equatorial, depending on which chair form it adopts. This slide will talk about strain in chair cyclohexane conformations. Steric strain occurs between groups that are too close together. Axial groups experience this steric strain due to something called a 1-3 diaxial interaction. In the left chair cyclohexane, I'm showing the upper axial positions with gray spheres. These interact with each other in a 1-3 diaxial interaction, giving steric strain. These protons are particularly close together, and their electron clouds interact and repel. The same is true of the axial positions on the bottom. These three hydrogens interact with each other and are close in space and generate steric strain. In the right chair cyclohexane, it also has axial positions on the upper side of the ring that interact in a 1-3 diaxial fashion, along with hydrogens in the lower part of the ring that interact in that way. Large groups experience more steric strain than small groups. 
So it's a good idea to focus your attention on steric interactions of large groups. Large groups create big problems, so they should be watched carefully. Here's an example of a substituted cyclohexane that has an R group. Imagine that R group is some large group. It could be methyl, could be ethyl, something bigger than a hydrogen. In this chair cyclohexane, the large group is equatorial. It has minimum steric strain because the R group isn't experiencing any of these 1,3 diaxial interactions. If we ring flip this molecule, that process puts the R group into an axial position. With the large group axial, there's more steric strain because it's interacting with these hydrogens I've indicated with gray circles. These are experiencing 1,3 diaxial interactions and the R group is big so it creates more problems than the other 1,3 diaxial interactions that just involve hydrogens. Between these two chair cyclohexanes, the left structure is favored because there's a lot less steric strain in it. The bottom line is large groups prefer equatorial positions and the larger the group, the larger the preference. We're gonna look at several substituted cyclohexane examples and examine this phenomenon. We'll use some energy differences delta G to calculate equilibrium constants KEQ for a couple of different pairs of conformations. Delta G of the reaction is equal to the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactant. We'll use the CASH program to calculate the energies of the product conformation and the reactant conformation and then subtract the reactant energy from the product energy to get the energy difference, which is delta G of the reaction. Then there are two equations for equilibrium constant that we'll use. One of these is KEQ is equal to the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. That's also equal to E to the minus delta G divided by RT. For this equation, T is temperature in Kelvin, and you should use 298 Kelvin for room temperature. R is the gas constant, and in this case you should use 1.987 times 10 to the minus 3 kilocalories per mole degree Kelvin. We'll be using this gas constant because the CASH program reports energy in units of kilocalories per mole. Using this gas constant, the units cancel, and we'll end up with equilibrium constant being a unitless value. This concludes the pre-lab video. Stay tuned for the next video in the series that will cover using cash to build structures, visualize them, and calculate their energies. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.